Hello guys, uh, welcome to another chapter of the Cinnamon Chats and here I have one of the cool friends that I've met on Instagram, I call her my bestie, uh, her name is Jessica, hi Jessica. Hey Ed, Ed, how you doing? I'm doing good, how are you today? Pretty good, it's a beautiful day up here in Boston so I'm feeling really good today, sunshine. Mm-hmm. So she is the uh, uh, owner and the creator of uh, The Wonder World, which she's an amazing uh, profile pic on Instagram, Instagram with amazing photos, with amazing information of all over the world. So you got to go and check it out. But please tell us how The Wonder World began. Yeah, it's a long story. Uh, so I guess it started uh, the whole kind of like my obsession with languages and cultures, which brought me to where I am today. It started when I was really young. I grew up in a town um, right outside of Boston called Newton, Massachusetts. And it's a, it was a very, um, you know, predominantly white town, uh, working class and also rich class. Me, I was working class. Um, and I felt really that um, I was always craving to learn about people who were exactly the opposite from me, from, you know, personality, style of clothes, language, what they looked like. And so I really just craved like experiences that were really different from me. And part of that became part of that was because I felt very different from the community that I was living in. So I really was drawn to people who were different from me because I didn't feel like I fit in. I was very shy. Um, I used to get made fun of a lot and I had really low self-esteem. So I always craved like the unique, the different, diverse. Um, and when I was younger, it was really difficult for me to gain access to these types of things because of the community that I was living in. Nothing bad about the community is just my kind of place fitting into it. it I didn't really find one for me. Um, so when I was young, I started to listen to a lot of music from other countries. Um, my home girl, Gloria Estefan, she got me through some tough times when I was younger. And also Celine Dion, I used to listen to all her music in French. Um, so when I started to kind of advance in my schooling, I started to study uh, Italian and French. And I randomly went on this exchange program when I was uh, 16, when I was in high school to Paris. Wow. And I didn't do any, yeah, it, oh my God, dude, it was, it was so amazing. Um, it was the first time I had ever been away from home. It was the first time I'd ever left the country. And it was the first time I had ever done any type of activity or program with school. Um, I'd never played sports. I never did any clubs. Um, you know, I didn't have like a really strong friends group. So it was like a kind of a random thing for me to do at that time. It was a very like out of my comfort zone thing, which here's my cat. <laughs> you can keep the cat or you can edit it out too. So it was really outside of my comfort zone. Um, and the whole trip I did feel really outside of my comfort zone, but it wasn't because I was in another country. It was mm. because I was always with a group of peers from my school. That's when I felt uncomfortable. Yeah. I felt more comfortable when I was at home with the French family having dinner with them and speaking to them in French. I felt more comfortable when I was walking around the city alone and, you know, going into stores or just like chilling at a cafe. Um, so this experience really like changed my ability, like to perceive myself as kind of a person who could be strong and independent um, because I really wasn't before. And I did the same experience in Italy, my last year of high school and uh, still kept a lot of those same friends and I still see them all the time. So these are kind of like two experiences I had when I was when I was younger, when I was a kid still. Um, and then that kind of, you know, made me continue to go back to Italy because I had made those friends um, and just continue to want to, to travel. Um, and then in the meantime, after I graduated from high school and I went to college and I spent a year in Italy and I didn't come home, um, to visit and my family didn't visit me and I think I went like three months one time without speaking any English which is crazy it really reset my brain um, to a point where where I came when I came back home finally after a year I was in complete culture shock I had to reacclimate you know my life to back to being like American and I wasn't used to that anymore so it was a very bizarre experience Um, and so I kept on trying to like replicate those experiences through travel, um, even if I was traveling on my own. And I also um, traveled to, I mean, I traveled to a lot of places in Europe mostly, 
Um, and after college, I became a high school teacher. Um, and so I've been teaching mostly Italian, and, but some French and Spanish as well. And I really just love learning languages and it's just like really my passion. Um, I feel like, I think I told you this quote the other day, like to have two languages is to have two, soul, two souls. Um, right, Mom? And so I really feel that. I really feel that hard. Like when I speak Italian, I feel like I'm in a different like personality, like I'm somebody else, like it's another like part of my soul. Um, so that's kind of like the the beginning part. And then after teaching for for several years, um, I started to take my students to Italy and I, I tried to replicate those experiences that I had um, on my own for my students. And I realized that that really was what I wanted to be mainly focusing my career on would be to create cultural experience experiences for people and to educate people on how to gain access to, first to travel because I think that people believe that it's very, very expensive. Um, of course, you have to save money when you travel. Of course you do. I have to. I have an account. I, every week I put a little money in there to travel. Um, and also how to gain access to the culture of the country that you are going to be visiting. I think it's very difficult for people to know how to do that. Um, it's so easy to just follow the main tourist attractions and then to say that you know a country and that you're done. And oh, I, I went <laughs> to the Eiffel Tower, so now I know all of France. No, you don't. You know maybe Paris and you know the Eiffel Tower. So I really was craving like, I was. I felt so just confined by the four walls of my classroom. Um, and so I really started to think, what can I do to feel more free and how can I do this work? So that's how the Wonder Word came about really. Um, was just the the need to educate and help others gain access to travel and to gain access to the culture before they leave, while they're there, and then how to kind of like process it when they get back. So that's a long story, not short, it was a pretty long story <laughs> of how the Wonder Word kind of was born, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And I know you love languages. Tell us please how, how many languages do you speak? I speak four languages. Um, English is my best, obviously. <laughs> then Italian, then French, then Spanish. Spanish I never studied formally, so that's why it's my lowest. I just kind of picked it up like at work and different jobs and like with friends and stuff and music. Um, and I speak a little bit of, of Arabic as oh. well, but I would I don't add that to the list because I'm not like conversationally fluent yet. Yet. Well, we, we, we know you're going to get there. Um, we'll get there. We're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, what has been one of the most uh, intercultural, uh, one of the most um, challenging intercultural experience that you have had while traveling? I mean, a lot of stuff comes to mind. I guess, I guess, you know, in the countries where I speak the languages, it's a little bit different. Um, because I don't have any issues with communication or, or understanding. Um, but I think I would probably have to say um, Italian transportation would be uh, one of the most frustrating experiences that I ever had was when I was trying to get from Sorrento to... Um, no, I'm sorry. I was trying to get from the Amalfi Coast to Sorrento. Um, and even though I speak Italian fluently, I asked, uh, you know, the... The, um, the hotel, if the schedule, I was understanding it correctly, because it's very confusing how they organize transportation schedules in Italy, in my opinion. For some people, they may not feel that way. Um, and so really, I was supposed to take two buses and it was supposed to take two hours. And I ended up taking four buses and walking three miles. And it took like four and a half hours. That was the most frustrating um That, that day, I, uh, and now that I'm reflecting back, is probably the most frustrated uh, moment I've had. And it's simply because, not because there's anything wrong with the transportation system um, or, or with my Italian, speriamo, I hope so. Um, it's just simply because it's just a very different organization system. Like we have to remember that language really, like where, where we are born and where we're from and language in and of itself, it makes people just think differently and perceive things differently and organize things in a different way. So even though I speak Italian and I've spent tons of time there, 
my brain really is wired for the United States way of living and organizing things. So I think this is a really, um, this can be a big block for people when they travel because they might just simply not be aware of this concept. Um, I, I wasn't aware of it until a few years ago. Um, so that would have to be my number one frustrating. And then I think the, the second one would just be simply language barriers. Um, specifically when I, I used to travel a lot in Tunisia because mm -hmm. I had an ex there and he was from there. And um, when I first went there, it was very overwhelming. Um, I did not study Arabic before I went. I did not listen to Arabic music before I went. I didn't watch movies. I didn't watch shows. I had no idea what it was like. So that's part of the culture immersion coaching that I do is to teach people how to gain access to the culture before they go so that when they get there, they can lessen a little bit of that overwhelming feeling, that culture shock, that all these people are talking around you and you don't know what they're saying. It can, it can feel very scary, depending on who you are. It can be very, very scary. Um, so I, that also is a, is a big deal for, it was a big deal for me. And I think it's a big deal for people when they don't speak the language um, and, and they don't know how to do that prep work kind of before they, you know. Mm, that's awesome. That was awesome. And I think there's a lot of like, a, a lot of good lessons that you can have like going overseas because I think immersing yourself in another culture challenge you uh, to reward your mind as, as what you think is correct, appropriate, or what you used to do as a custom. Uh, and, I, and I was thinking um, uh, right now, like, do you think there's a difference between exploring another country with someone who is national than someone who is from your own country? And how yeah, does it affect? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think there's a huge difference between exploring a country um, with someone who's from your own country and you go to a different country together versus, um, you know, hanging out or exploring a country with someone who is from there. Um, and I've done both. Um, I think that when you travel with somebody from your own country, when you travel with someone from your own country, it's most of the time there's going to be one person that does more of the work. Mm. Work, I don't mean it in like a heavy way, but I mean finding where to eat, finding how to get somewhere, finding what we're going to do, um, you know, picking where we're going to stay and, and these types of things. It's always going to be one person who does more work. So that can be sometimes like a burden on that person. You can feel like a little bit like, you know, maybe not as excited about the process because you feel so much responsibility to take care of the other person who might not feel as comfortable to do that. That's happened mm. to me a few times. I think it's very normal though. And, and I'm usually okay to be the person to do all that stuff, even if I've never been to that country before. Also, I think that um, it, it creates a problem of constantly comparing that country to your own mm. because you're with somebody else who's from your own country. So in my experience, um, and I've experienced this a lot with my students, it's always, you know, why is this like this? And how come this is like this? And why, why, you know, instead of just living in the moment and, and being part of it, um, it's a lot easier to create a barrier in between yourself and the culture of the place that you're staying if you are traveling with somebody from your own country. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. It doesn't mean that it's bad, but it means that you should talk to me first, culture immersion coach, so I can teach you ways to avoid um, a situation in which you are really just going to be um, having a narrow scope of, of the place that you're visiting. Um, and I think that when you visit um, a country with somebody who is from there, um, that comparison kind of goes away um, because you are you have immediate access to the culture through that person even if you don't speak the language even if you've never been there before even if you don't know anything about the country it's a much different experience and will be much more of a culturally immersive experience if you decided to travel um with somebody who was from that country that you're actually visiting so in my experience those are times that i have gotten to know people's families that i've been invited into homes Um, and re-invited and come back to stay with the family and like sleep over and stuff. Um, and it's how I've been kind of just like 
accepted as one of them in a way, especially in Italy because I do speak the language. Um, so I think that there's there's definitely benefits to both, and you can definitely prepare um, to gain as much access to the culture as you can with either way. So they're, they're both good. Me, I prefer with the local, always, 100% of the time, or by myself. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So you talk a little bit about your students because uh, you're a teacher also. So, so you you teach uh, different languages to a lot of kids that have maybe never gone out of the country. Why do you think it's important, like, to travel uh, uh, or to teach people to travel as young as possible? Um, you, what is the what what is the biggest challenge that you think they are missing out by not doing that? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so. You know, I think that languages are important because, you know, I always tell my students this, like the United States isn't the only country in the whole world. And by only mastering and knowing one language, you're really restricting your access to know what's going on in the rest of the world. That doesn't mean that you need to be necessarily bilingual, um, but it's as simple as, you know, following um, Italian news station on your Instagram or looking up the names of the top five newspapers in France or, you know, in the United States, we have a lot of Spanish speaking TV channels like Telemundo and Univision. So we have a lot of ways in the United States to gain access to culture while we're here, even if we're not traveling. Um, so this is something that I always, you know, remind my students that the internet has a lot of resources for you to be able to learn another language or just, you know, Um, even just watching shows on, on Netflix. Uh, Netflix recently in the past five years or so has opened up their international market. I mean, so, so much. It's, it's like mind blowing um, how, how much they've been able to produce in the past few years. So there's a lot of shortcuts if you don't travel. Um, traveling young, I think is very important because when you are younger, your brain is less wired. It's less hardwired and you still have a lot of like gray area that you can fill and that you can transform. Um, so to have experiences that are outside of your comfort zone is kind of like the prime time to do that when you're younger. Um, even though for the young person, it seems very horrible and awkward and they never, they never want to do that. Right. So um, I guess, You know, really, it's easier for it to talk about it in my perspective, what, what happened to me. And then also when I take my students, um, for me, it was it, it completely reshaped the way that I thought. And it just changed my entire life. If I never went on that exchange program when I was in high school to Paris, I would never like we wouldn't be talking right now. There would be no wonder word. I would not have became a teacher. I would have never double majored in, in languages when I was in college. So it really, um, you know, it really gave me what I needed as a, as a young person. Um, for my students now that I take, I feel like it's very important for them because they feel that they are gaining access to a, an international community that they were not part of before. Um, and, and that's very, um, that's very fulfilling. It's very fulfilling and it's a very um, empowering thing, I think, when you can travel in general, but especially, you know, when you are a young person, you can feel very empowered. And, you know, lastly, I think it's just very important to be a global citizen. Mm. Um, and the younger that we can teach people to do that, the more proficient they can be in that. Um, and then who knows where they can go later on. Um, And, you know, learning another language and, and being able to, to travel, um, if you can, if you can make that work for you, it really also just makes you more of like a marketable person, right? Like if I go into, or let's say you go into a job interview and, right, you're bilingual, you speak Spanish, you speak English, and um, you have, you know, another person who goes to that same job interview and they only speak Spanish and they don't speak English. Um, or even the other way around, who, it doesn't matter. They only speak one language, they're monolingual. You both have the same education, you have the same work experience, you even have both great personalities that would fit in perfectly with the company, et cetera, et cetera. You are going to get the job. The bilingual person is going to get the job. The monolingual person is not going to get the job. 
because you have more of a skill of adaptability, of being able to problem solve, being uh, empathetic and understanding other people because you are bilingual. And this isn't just what I think. This is this is true. This is scientific, um, and there's been a lot of, you know, uh, psycholinguistic studies about this topic of how, um, you know, knowing another language can help you in in other areas of of your life. I mean, so many. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think what you talk is important. Like a, a lot of like, a lot of how we see ourselves. Sometimes we see ourselves in, in light of other peers, but sometimes we don't see ourselves in light of other people who go through overseas and how, how they how they navigate different situations that we that we find normal and they find challenging. And I think that's the beauty of like uh, having a lot of different cultures of the world. And I, and I and that's something that you said about the U.S. having like a, a window to a lot of cultures. I think it was amazing to when I was in Greenville, South Carolina, hanging out with the uh, with the Indian community, and it was awesome learning a lot about their customs, about their food, and also like going to Virginia, uh, hanging out with people from Korea, and also learning about the culture of uh, people from Africa. Like that, that's just just awesome, and and I think I get to learn a lot more uh, from them about myself than. Uh, that living just around people from my own because it challenged me to see how they see things. Well, uh, well one of the things about the, uh, the wonder world and the world is that uh, we have a great uh, gift to the world that's called food. Uh, so of all the, the places that you've been, what, what, is, uh, what is your favorite international food? Oh my goodness. So I have a lot of international food that I like. Um, I'll start with, let's see. So, all right. I, I can talk about a little bit about the kind of Basque culture. So I went to Bilbao um, last year with students and oh my gosh, if you have not been to the Basque country in Spain, you have to go. I mean, it really is another country. They really, you know, they really consider themselves like another country. Anyway, um, we all know tapas, right? And we know small plates and everything. And in some parts of Spain and in, in Bilbao, they're called pinchos. P-I-N-T-X-O-S, I think. I don't know the spelling. And so, the, so it wasn't so much maybe as like one dish that I loved there, but just like the whole concept of pinchos and going into a bar or a restaurant and having all these like little, they're little small plates and little mini food and finger food. And you just go up to the bar and me, I'll have a beer, please, sir. And then you point to what you want to to eat and they put on a little plate for you. And oh my God, I just, I really like this way of eating. I like to be able to try a lot of different stuff. So I like the small bites and try a lot of different things and get, and get more. Um, and also another thing that I had there that was just so amazing, which I ha also have a lot here is fried calamari. Ooh, um, squid, which is so good, and I really like that um, everywhere. But there was something about how they did it in Bilbao. Oh my god, it was just so freaking good! Like, I can't explain it. It was very light, it didn't feel so heavy, oil fried, like so breaded. Um, and they, all they did was just put a little bit of salt, no seasons, nothing else. It was just so, so perfect. Um, So there's a lot of really excellent gastronomy culture in Bilbao, like so, so good. Um, another thing that I really like is couscous. Um, I ate a lot of couscous in Tunisia. And also I had a lot of Moroccan friends when I lived in Italy because there's a, a large immigrant population of Moroccans in specifically in Florence, Italy, but in a lot of places, a lot of places in the world. Um, and so having that type of experience was, was great to like, you know, being in Italy, but with a bunch of Moroccan people and then getting invited to their house to eat their food. It's like, you know, it's like that movie Inception, like you're in a different country and then you hang out with someone from a different culture and then you eat their food. Like it was like that type of moment. Um, So I really like couscous so much. And then, you know, obviously in Italy, I have a lot of pizza. I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's so good. I eat the whole pizza. That's what you do when you go to Italy. You have the whole pizza to yourself. Have you tried to cook any of the dishes that you have tried internationally back home? Yeah, I've cooked couscous a lot. Um, a lot of couscous. Yeah, pizza, no, because um, I am, I'm not, I'm, 
full disclosure, I'm not a great cook. Um, you, if you know, when we hang out, you will cook it for me because I know that you're a really good cook. Me, I'm a little bit less. I can feed myself. I'm good with that. Um, pizza, no, I never tried to make pizza because I'm always so scared. As I want to make the dough myself, but I'm so scared to like do. I feel like that's such like a big, like, how dare you, Jessica? You don't know how to really cook, and you're gonna try to make dough like you're crazy. Um, but I made couscous before. I I like couscous a lot. It's it's it takes a long time, but it's not that hard to make. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us in this interview. Uh, the, the wonder world for you guys. And you can follow her on Instagram, on uh, Facebook. Uh, and also, like, uh, she, uh, I will leave all her links below uh, in this uh, in this conversation that you can see and you can connect with her because she's an amazing lady. And you will be able just to get on board with uh with all her posts, because uh, it, it's not only her posts, but she gives a lot of information about it, so you all learn as much as you go through each one of them. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I had a really good time, and I really, really appreciate it a lot. Yeah, thanks. Me too. Take care. Thank you. You too. Ciao.